what's going on everybody from John the 23rd, I'm Connor Van Dyke and you're watching Hot Ones, the show with hot wings and even hotter questions. Today I'm joined by Alex Cagnelli. He's the son of Sheila and Robert and younger brother of Jack Cagnelli. He's a junior at the University of Tennessee and has been involved in some of the biggest organizations, from Vol Catholic Co-Social Chair to member of BYX. You can catch him around campus giving tours as a campus ambassador or hanging out in the lounge at John the 23rd when he has free time. Alex Cagnelli, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, man. I'm excited. Yeah, how are you feeling about today? You a hot spice guy, spicy food person? I'm not a spicy food person. Um, just the smell of these things is kind of kind of <laughs> scaring me. I'm not worried about the questions you have prepared because you got nothing on me. Um, but the wings, I'm worried about. This is, I'm worried. This is my enemy right here. I'm all good on this front right here. But this is this is what's kind of getting me. So. Well, good. Let's lock in and let's jump to the first sauce. Let's do it. How is it? Not too bad. It's like a normal buffalo sauce for the most part. I mean, on a normal day, I would call it spicy, but I feel like my guard is up right now. And these like seven dudes next to it are just like totally alphaing it right now. So I don't really need to worry about this guy right here. He's not, he's not my problem. Fair enough. <laughs> so as we, entered, as we mentioned in the intro, you're currently the co-social chair for Vol Catholic, where you help lead weekly events here at John 23rd. What have been some of the challenges of stepping into a leadership role for Vol Catholic, and how have you grown from this experience? Um, I think just like having one of those situations where you, at first you're somebody who is just going to things, and you're like, oh, I really love going to these things. Um, but then you become the person where if you just decide to not do anything, or if you have a busy week, it just doesn't get done. Um, so if me or Ben decide to just like not do anything, there's just no Vol Catholic. Uh, so it's been really tough to just be the person that has to be the one that just gets it done. Um, it's kind of tough, and I think honestly the hardest thing is just coming up with ideas. Once we're here, once we're going, once we're just managing, you know, getting stuff where it needs to be, changing up the pulse room, whatever it is, uh, it's not that bad. But there are many a Sundays where I just sit there staring at the ceiling, um, just like, what are we gonna do? And that's why uh, we've had about 37 bonfires um, <laughs> over the past <laughs> over the past two semesters. Um, me and Ben are single-handedly keeping the Ace Hardware on Chapman Highway. Um, <laughs> in business, um, but yeah, that's been the one challenge, but um, I've definitely grown a lot from it. It's taught me to good organization skills, good, you know, planning skills, and just it's just good to take on responsibility in general. Yeah, so you mentioned events. What's been your favorite event that you've seen Vol Catholic do in the past three years you've been here at Tennessee? Um, I might be a jerk for saying one of my own. I'm not <laughs> gonna say one of my own, because to be fair, I really didn't go to too, too many of before I was the social chair. I would go, but I had busy Wednesdays. Um, but my favorite one was when we did movie night. Uh, we brought the projector outside. Shout out to Noah Walsh and his family. Let us use their projector that's way nicer than we should have had. Um, and we just brought all the couches out um, in front of, in front of um, John 23rd. And it was just cool because people got to actually see like Vol Catholic be something. You know, it's not just like this building that is sitting on a campus that no one knows about. Yeah. So many people walked by, saw like 50 to 60 people sitting on couches watching wow. the Sandlot together. Um, and I think that <laughs> that like was a big step for Vol Catholic as a whole, just because now people are telling me, oh, I saw you guys outside versus, oh, wait, we have a student group here. Um, and that's not because of me, it's because of the people that showed up and made it great. Um, but that was definitely my, my favorite event we've had so far. That guy's got some <laughs> some stuff going on. He's, a little, a little yeah. <laughs> he's not bad though. But you know, we're two two eighths of the way through, right? Yeah. Awesome. So being born with your dad, a first generation immigrant to America, and growing up on Long Island with about one fourth the population being Italian, how has your Italian heritage played a role in your life and your family? Yeah, it's pretty important to me. People know that I like to talk about it. I'm pretty proud of it. Uh, my last name kind of owns it. You know, it's a nice Italian last name. And it, it was definitely big for me. Uh, like I said, I grew up in an Italian neighborhood. Uh, so when I talk to people maybe from here, it's a little different. It's like, oh, like neighborhoods are just neighborhoods. But it's like I was in a neighborhood of yeah. pretty much all Italians, um, all Catholics, things like that. Um, and I, uh, yeah, it definitely just 
was a huge part of just like my culture growing up. We spent every Sunday at my Nona's doing Sunday sauce, having dinner. Um, you know, like I said, my dad came over from Italy, uh, just grew up in a completely different way. He just sees things differently. He grew up, I always say, without air conditioning. Uh, he <laughs> used to shower in the, the, the uh, it's called like the Tribra River uh, in Travo, Italy. And so it was just different, um, but it was something that I love, I'm super proud of. Um, it, it's why I'm so passionate about my Catholic faith. It's why I love soccer. It's why I, um, I don't know, why I love the food that I like. Um, why I sometimes can't stand the food down here and the pizza <laughs> down here. But um, yeah, it was a super big part of just my upbringing because we were just surrounded by it. You, just, you know, Italians get very just like proud of their heritage. So between all the classic Italian dishes, what would you say your favorite meal would have to be then? Okay, my favorite meal, my favorite meal out of anything, and this is probably something you may, mainly only get at an Italian restaurant, is like thin, thinly cut veal. So like you gotta get veal and you gotta like pound it until it's like paper, like you can hold it up to the light and it's like translucent. Um, but whatever you put that in, any kind of sauce, it doesn't matter, it's the best thing there is. Um, my grandfather was a chef um, and he never made us meals because my Nona always cooked, but when he did make a meal, he would make a veal cut super thin and to pound it, he would use a bullet from a World War II, <laughs> from a World War II um, ship that his brother served in World War II with, and he used to grab the bullet by like the pointy part, like a cartoon thing, and yeah. it would go, boom, 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 <laughs> and it would shake the entire apartment in Astoria, Queens, that my dad grew up in, and we were kids, and the apartment would literally be shaking back and forth, but it would make this veal that was like that thin, and um, my dad always talks about how he loved that, and now whenever I go to one of my favorite restaurants, that's what I get, um, and that's like, to me, the quintessential Italian meal, uh, because yeah, it takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of effort, and I, I, that's why I love it so much. Yeah, hard work usually pays off. It does. Good? Good, yeah, I wasn't that bad. I won. He, he could have got demoted a bit. He could have got moved down the pecking order. He wasn't so bad. Fair enough. So from working at Chick-fil-A to roofing with your friends like Matt and Jack to MHC finance, and finance this upcoming summer, what has been your favorite job and do you have any great insights or stories from working there? I did love Chick-fil-A. I love Chick-fil-A. I also, little Alex Cagnelli lore that nobody knows about, for about a couple weeks over the summer I was a waiter at a country club. Another thing I did, one of my most forgotten jobs, but my favorite job has got to be roofing. Um, only reason I liked it out of any part of it is because I made $80 an hour. Um, so <laughs> for a good couple weeks over the summer, I made more money than my parents, which was an awesome feeling. Um, but one of the great insights I learned from it was definitely to stay in school. Um, you know, <laughs> nothing kind of motivates you to like get a degree than, <laughs> than waking up at five in the morning to get on a roof that's completely black in 100 degree heat in the summer. Um, and having to wear full work pants and a sweatshirt because you can't get fiberglass on you. Um, it was probably then when I realized that I should probably never look at my phone ever again in class. And <laughs> I have since then, but I definitely think more about that's the most important lesson I learned from working was realizing the value of an education. So I can make money sitting down and not getting fiberglass all up and down my arm. Yeah, this doesn't smoke at all. <laughs> this smells really bad. Are you ready? Ready? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. I'm gonna say, there's no way that people make this for <laughs> For eating purposes. Like the only reason that this should exist is for this show. Like no one, no one, like I don't care what type of food you eat, no one puts this sauce on their food and is like, oh, this tastes good. Like this is literally just for the sake of making people uncomfortable. And I live by that. That's a fair take for that. Yeah. Well, we're only we're only halfway done, so you might have to buckle in a little bit. <laughs> All right, Alex, we have a reoccurring segment on our show, show called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive on our guest's Instagram and other places, pull interesting pictures that need more context. So I'll show you a picture, and if you could tell me the bigger story, that'd be great. Does that sound good? Yeah. Awesome. All right, first up, can you explain <laughs> this picture from Neelan and what the story is behind this game and its energy? Okay, so most people at UT know this, but I'll explain this for everyone. Um, that is the third Saturday in October, 2022. October 15th, 2022. Uh, one of the greatest days of my life. Uh, University of Tennessee, 
beat the University of Alabama um, in their yearly Cigar Bowl uh, for the first time in 15 years, 52 to 49, uh, to advance to 6 and 0, undefeated, eventually getting a number one ranking. Things fell through from there, um, but kind of considered to be one of the great Newland classics, one of the best games ever at the University of Tennessee. Um, and so the story behind this picture is obviously after the game we stormed the field, um, so ran down. Uh, the second the kick went up, I had all my buddies from John 23rd around me, went crazy. I was knocking over like sorority girls left and right, throwing elbows, <laughs> and I was like, I'm getting down there, I'm getting down there. And I did, I did, I got down there, um, and I uh, got up there onto the field, everyone was going crazy. Eventually my buddy Kyle, Kyle Fagan here from John 23rd, was like, get on my shoulders, let's go get you up top. I get on my shoulders, um, so I get up there, I'm on there, I'm just throwing my hands in the air, I'm yeah. yelling, people are kind of looking at me because I was the first person around me to like get on like someone's shoulders and be up in the air. And I'm just having the time of my life. I FaceTime my mom, I called my mom from <laughs> up there, I was like, ah, and she was like, just everyone knows that the service was so bad. And then, next up, can you pull back the curtain on this childhood photo? Oh, oh baby. <laughs> um, yeah, that is me. Um, I don't know what, what age I am, but I'm probably too old to be doing that. Um, <laughs> And yeah, my favorite superhero growing up before I got a little bit older, before I grew up, I, I was more into like what you would consider nerdier things. I liked comic books and I liked video games. Yeah. Um, my favorite little comic book character was Robin uh, because I have to be like that. Like I was that kid that like, no, I don't like that. I like Robin, like the weird, you know, like the kid that like has to just do something <laughs> different. Like that's literally the only reason for it. I was just like that. Um, and so that's what I dressed up as. Um, I put on a, a Speedo and, and some my mom's tights um, and a shirt with a cape. <laughs> And I uh, ran around the neighborhood. Um, I ran around the neighborhood dressed like that for Halloween. All right, last up, we have this one. Can you explain what the significance behind this picture is? That right there is my high school graduation. Yeah. Um, that's me with my good friend Emma Carmody. Um, that was right after my parents were taking pictures. My mom's in the background of that. You can see her. Um, and we were both awarded. Um, Essentially, my high school is called Kellenberg. It's like the Mr. Kellenberg Award or <laughs> Most Honorable Graduate. Is that what it's called? Or, yeah, like Mr. Kellenberg or Most Honorable Graduate or General Excellence or like Most Handsome Person at the School. <laughs> oh, okay. um, I might have lied about one of um, <laughs> But that was the award I received at the end of graduation. Probably, like not to be sappy, but probably like the, the greatest honor of my life. Uh, I love that school so much and I just think everyone there is so great. So to, for the entire faculty, including the clergy there, uh, to vote me as you know, what they considered the most honorable graduate or the Mr. Kellenberg was a, a really awesome. Not that bad. Not, no. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's got a bit of an, an aftertaste, but. Yeah. We're doing good? Yeah, I'm doing okay so far. That's not too bad. That's not what I expected. We're cruising. So comedy and jokes have always been a large part of your life and source of joy. Even recently I heard you say one of your quotes uh, was from St. Lawrence when he comedically said, I'm finished on this side, turn me over, while he was being roasted alive. What, where did your love for the comedic start and how has it impacted the way that you live now? Um, yeah, I love jokes. I, I love making people laugh. It's my favorite thing in the world. Um, it is one of, I think, my good gifts is my ability to make a good joke, but it's also one of my great vices because nothing, <laughs> there's nothing that has been more consistent in my confessions than, eh, I probably made a joke I shouldn't have made. Um, <laughs> some people in the audience can attest to that, but they're not allowed to say that, so that's okay. Um, but yeah, I think it kind of goes back to the Italian thing. I think there's a specific like Italian sense of humor um, that exists, and I think I just was given that completely. If you ever meet my dad, we're the exact same person with the exact same sense of humor. So I'm literally just a carbon copy of him. That's where it came from. And he's the exact same way with my grandfather, his dad, who sadly passed. Um, they're the same exact person. But it's interesting because he didn't speak any English. I don't speak any Italian. My dad speaks both. Um, so we're kind of like the transition of it from like America to here, but it's the same exact thing. Like if you see him talk or if there's old videos of my grandpa, um, we're the same person. Um, so that's where kind of the love for jokes comes from. And that's, that's, um, why I love that, that St. Lawrence quote, man, there's nothing better than that. What a dog. <laughs> yeah. So in your life, you've probably had a lot of jokes and comedic things you've seen. What's been your favorite joke or comedy thing to see or even participate in? Oh, man. Favorite joke or comedy thing. Um, my favorite comedy movie 
is Grown Ups. I love, <laughs> I love Grown Ups, specifically Grown Ups Two. And people think Grown Ups Two is worse than the Grown second Ups one's one. great. It's great. I love the second and one. And so I've never watched. I've watched no movie more than Grown Ups. Me and my dad um, watch Grown Ups probably once a month. Yeah. I've probably seen it over a hundred times. Anytime <laughs> it's on TV, I'll be like, Alex, get down here. Grown Ups is on. <laughs> Grown Ups is on. And I'll just come down to my room and watch it. Um, and uh, that's like my favorite thing in the world because it's with my dad. We have the same sense of humor. Right. Um, and every single time we watch it, we say we find a new joke that we don't remember from the last time we watched it. Um, and that's what good comedy is about. Is if you make something that's so funny that you can watch it a hundred times and still find something funny in it, it's just through and through funny. Yeah. Um, and that's what is so great about that. This is what's great about any comedy movie when it's like that. And I try to be like that every day. I try not to make the same joke, even though I probably make the same joke a thousand times a day. Yeah. One of the lore pieces about me is that I used to have to mow the lawn at my house back home in Cleveland. And I get so freaking bored the whole time that I would put the noise canceling headphones on that my dad had and I would play Grown Ups 2 <laughs> every time I mowed the lawn. So every week I was memorizing the lines <laughs> of Grown Ups 2. And by the end of the summer, I knew the whole movie back to front. We could put on a play. We could put on, yeah, a, we could. We could put on a two man show of Grown Ups 2 right here. <laughs> it could be Vol Catholic. In the Paul's room. Vol Catholic event. I could be Adam Sandler and you could be David Spade. I think I'd want to be and Kevin James. We could throw you in a tire and roll you down the Melrose, <laughs> the Melrose, <laughs> the Melrose Hill. Uh, I think I'll stick to the wings. I don't know if I can do that. I'm not. Yeah. That's right. Are you ready to go on to the bomb? Yeah. Let me smoke. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this one's this one's bad. This one's pretty bad. Who makes this stuff? What is he made out of? It's not good. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. It's not good. <laughs> so soccer, as you mentioned earlier, has been a big part of your life ever since a young age. From playing as a kid to following Chelsea FC and players like Peter Cech and David Luiz, what is it about soccer that has drawn you in and why do you love it so much? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I got into soccer. Um, <laughs> in uh, fifth or sixth grade. Like I said, I wasn't really into sports much before that. Um, oh my gosh. <sighs> yeah, it's, it, it keeps going. It keeps going. Oh, oh my goodness. It's not the bomb. Um, and yeah, my grandfather, my, on my mom's side, my English side, my grandfather's from England, um, when he passed away, he got really big into soccer. Um, loved it ever since. Like my dad and my dad kind of picked it up too um, from Italy and yeah. So it meant a lot to me. Um, started playing it, practiced every day, got pretty good at it. Um, got to play travel ball, middle school, high school ball. I had nine practices a week, including games, nine wow. practices or games, uh, because I was playing for two teams. I absolutely loved it. But yeah, Chelsea was my team because it was my grandfather's team. He's from Chelsea, uh, yeah. London, the borough in London. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite position to play while you are in soccer? What did you play most? Um, for travel ball, I was a striker, so I played kind of center forward. Um, sock for club for Kellenberg or for, for school for Kellenberg. I was definitely more of a uh, a winger. And I kind of liked winger a little bit better. Less pressure to be the one holding the ball up. More about you know just kind of absolutely burning scrubs down the line. <laughs> um, they used to put these kids up against me that they thought could could uh, run as fast as me. I would just burn them in the dust, and then I'd go miss a wide open net for the people that know me back home. People that played on my team, you know. I miss those wide open shots, but I'd burn people. I love playing winger. I love playing winger for Kellenberg especially. There was no greater joy in my life um, than, than playing left wing uh, for the Kellenberg Firebirds. Nice. You ready to move on to the seventh wing? No. Not so bad, but it's spicy. It's just like mixing with the other one. But yeah, let's do it. It's a weird taste. It's a weird one. <laughs> it's orange. Go off. There we go. So I know that a few years ago you went on a trip to the Holy Land, like you mentioned earlier, visiting places like the old city of Jerusalem, 
the Jordan River and many other biblical sites. I recently went there this past May. Um, can you describe what that experience was like and how it's impacted your faith journey from then until now? Yeah, uh, going back to the Bama thing, I always said Bama was one of the best days of my life because I thought going in Israel, touching ground there was the best day of my life. Um, there was nothing like it. It was such an amazing experience. Um, oh man, my nose is running. So yeah, makes you yeah, yeah. Clear your nostrils up. Yeah. Um, Good for allergies. <laughs> um, yeah. It was one of the, just the best experiences of my life. Um, got to go on a trip, kind of through my high school, kind of not. Got to go with my high school chaplain though. Um, and it was, it was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, got to land in Tel Aviv, go right over to Jerusalem. Yeah. Uh, just placed my hands on the stone of unction, the stone that Jesus was laid on when they, when they um, ritually purified his body before burying him. Right. Uh, go, to, go up to Calvary, put my hand in the, in the ground where they stuck the cross. Um, yeah. Go put my hand on Jesus' tomb. Probably just the most profound moment in my life. Um, I left right before COVID, uh, so I got back. Um, and COVID was a week later. They asked us if we had been to China in the last 10 days <laughs> when we got on the plane. Um, so it was that close to COVID, um, and it just happened at the perfect time because COVID was a rough time for me. Um, and that slingshotted my faith, and it, it, uh, it just saved me and uh, really um, it was an amazing experience and just being able to go there and see all those areas and see the Holy Land and put, put places to what happened. Um, in the Bible and what happened in the Gospels was was uh, something just can't describe. Yeah, what was your favorite site to visit while you were there? Like I, when I was there, I got to visit a ton of places. I'm sure you have a favorite, or at least yeah. one or two. Yeah, my big thing um, was was the Garden of Gethsemane, oh, uh, yeah. where the agony in the garden happened. When I was a freshman, our textbook had a picture of it, and I remember looking in that that textbook and seeing the Garden of Gethsemane and just like it looks so real. If you've seen it in real life, it's it's half they put a church over, but half it looks just like it would look like back then. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is all real. Like this, you know, this is coming to school for a <laughs> Like this actually happened. This happened yeah. in a real place. I was like, I want to see this before. Um, eventually got the chance to see it. I didn't know we were going to it. We were walking down Palm Sunday Road, um, turned left, just saw the same exact shot where I looked in that textbook when I was a when I was a kid uh, or when I was a freshman, and I just like broke down crying. Um, probably a little bit. Less than I'm probably crying right now because of that that sauce, but <laughs> I uh, just broke down crying. I was like, "This is insane!" Uh, just a full circle moment. Uh, I came so far from when I looked at that picture in the textbook to me getting there, um, and it was just to me the best sight I ever saw. Just how real it was. It was one of the few things in Jerusalem that still looks like it did when Jesus walked it, because everything else it's great, but it has a church built over it. Um, and, yeah. and so just being there and um, seeing that was was the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. So I know you were there with six Jewish people and six Catholics. What was that experience like and how did that uh, change your experience? Yeah, it was really cool because it's it wasn't just like me going and experiencing like my faith, but it's also like looking at six other people and explaining to them why this is important to me. Um, and then vice versa, going to their holy sites and having them explain to me why it's important to them. Um, just, you know, getting to know people better, getting different perspectives, um, just like it just added a layer to it that I think people, most people don't get. Most people, I'm going to go on a Christian trip, I'm going to go on a Jewish yeah. trip, I'm going to go on this or that. Um, but going to the Holy Land with a cantor, Jewish cantor, six Jewish kids, six Catholic kids, Catholic priests was something that was just like, for all of human history of that land being important, no one I don't think I ever get experiences like that like I had. Um, so it was, uh, that was super impactful, so cool. It's awesome. Yeah, just get a little, get a little bit on there. <laughs> Here you okay. go. I'll take some too. Oh, I don't like the way that smells. Yeah, this one, this one's gonna be a little rough. There we go. Oh, just like the taste of like breathing. Like I just breathe and it's just <laughs> <Right>? like, <laughs> just like. <laughs> it's hot. It's hot. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Here we go. One more of yours. How you feeling? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Man. <laughs> that's that's a uh, that's some spicy stuff. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> we made it. We made it. We made it. Not yet. No, we made it. Look at you, Alex Gagnelli, taking on the wings of death, and now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you. <laughs> this camera, this camera, this camera. Tell, let the people know what you've got going on in your life. Alrighty, you can catch me every Wednesday. Um, 
lead in some sort of half mediocre thing that we call a ball Catholic event. Um, doing fun stuff, getting people together, bonfires, um, movie nights, whatever it may be. Um, and we're doing that every Wednesday, 7 o'clock here in the Paulist Room, the very studio of Hot Ones. Um, come by. Um, you can also catch me, Beta Upsilon Chi, uh, fraternity here on campus, super, super proud to be a part of. Um, I absolutely love just like getting to know the guys um, and being a part of that fraternity of guys from all different kind of Christian backgrounds, but um, putting on different social events. We got open parties, come to our some of our open parties, things like that. It's a great time. Um, and then the, you can also catch me um, at the Knox, the greatest off-campus apartment, um, hanging out with my girlfriend um, and her roommates, um, <laughs> buying her food and watching movies and buying her food and, and um, driving her places and um, having a good time. So if you want to hang out, come with me and the most amazing girl in the world. You can come to the Knox apartment um, and, and uh, come watch a movie with us. There we go. There we go. There we go. You feeling good? I'm feeling good, yeah. Yeah? Not hurting too much? No. Good. Here we go. We did it. Cover your ears for those who are sensitive. I need to poop. <laughs> I need to poop. Your boys got to poop. Um, your boys got to eat. Your boys probably got to throw up because I like this, this the more we sit here the more like I, I yeah. like I'm not like it's not in my mouth anymore It's like in yeah. here. Yeah, oh, it's oh. in here. Let's go hit the bathrooms. Let's do it, man. All right That's a good end. That's a good place to end